Hey guys, so we're doing a video today, stating the obvious like always. Anyway, if you want to follow me on my social media, that's where I wanted to go with that thought. Twitter, Instagram, there they are. It's a really fun time. So, you know, go over there. Also, subscribe because we're about, I'd say maybe like 20,000 away from 500k and at 500k we're making a second channel just for random stuff. So if you want to take part in that, then subscribe and, you know, we'll get there within... Like, should be about 20 days. Uh, I'm, I'm averaging about 1k a day. So we should be there in a, less than a month. So by the end of this month, if everything goes well, we should have a second channel. Also, I was going to do a quick and natural makeup look today. And I'm living my emo fantasy now. So that's that's cool. Red eyeshadow is really a commitment. Because not only does it stain your eyelids, it also stains your brushes and your fingertips. And anything else you use to apply makeup. And then it like falls on your cheek. And then <laughs> you have more blush on your cheek than you ever needed to. I also, um, I'm... I'm a big fan of blush and I do my face first and then I do my eyes so I did my blush like normal you know went and then I did a red eyeshadow and I looked like a clown so I had to tone that shit down and now my skin is dry like a lizard <laughs> just thought you needed to know that but I love red eyeshadow and I will do anything and everything to have this look on my eyelids last video I was supposed to talk about well actually I was supposed to talk about this the video before that video so clearly my memory is absolute garbage because I didn't Lele Pons has been under fire lately because she was being semi I wouldn't say but like insensitive to another race so she is correct me if i'm wrong colombian correct me if i'm wrong it was there i know she's not mexican that's the main issue here and she did this video of like i'm 100 mexican and then she put on like very stereotypical mexican farmer outfits and everyone's kind of just upset about it because they're like you know there are so many mexicans that don't <laughs> dress like that and it, it for you to pick that very like stereotypical here is a you know working mexican farmer outfit for your tiktok was a little bit, you know, shit. I recently spoke about Tana Mojo's perfume. It's Tana by Tana. It is this skull looking bottle. And if you're not up to date with the drama regarding that, then I will bring you up to date. She released this perfume. It, first of all, is basically just a copy of the Hot Topic nail varnishes and perfumes that are also that skull shape. Two, those bottles are also sold in bulk on like AliExpress for about 30 cents. So for her to, you know, claim that this took so long to think of and uh, oh my god, all these, you know, scents we had to go through. Like her video really doesn't speak much on the scent. Like there is no speak of notes or like, you know, what you're getting from. It's like she doesn't really know what she's talking about. It's it's making someone talk about something they have no clue about without educating them on it first. And that's basically Tana's perfume video. And then recently people started receiving their perfumes and the boxes look like they've been dragged through concrete to get to their house. Someone tied a nice knot on it and dragged it all the way to their house. I don't know what I expected from Tana, but now thinking about it, it was this. It's just very low effort low energy not great quality products is what i expect from tana and yet she is still my fave problematic person you know can't help who you love so someone said so is it true that this isn't even your perfume and they have already sold it for years at hot topic girl stop and tana replied to that saying no no shades hot topic but my bottle is not cheap tiny acrylic roll bullshit I love the skull. I made this perfume at a time of my life where they really embodied my brand and me, but it's super thick glass bottle and metal details. I went through a thousand different bottles f out of here. Which, yeah, I mean, the quality could be great. I don't know. I haven't held the bottle in my hand. If you have, let me know if it's great quality. But still, the, the concept is the same as Hot Topic. So, you know, could have come up with something slightly different and something that you can't find on AliExpress. So... You know, it's just my tea on that. Next, Tana Mojo T. She recently tweeted out this, basically saying something along the lines of, this is my favorite melatonin vape. And she just put the link to that vape. And if you know influencers, once you get past a certain amount of followers, you don't just give free promo to companies randomly. You can say like, oh, I like melatonin vapes, but you wouldn't ever really link one because that is free promotion that you could be getting paid for. So people usually just say broad things like, oh, I like melatonin vapes, but they would be like, I like this specific melatonin vape and I'm not being paid for this. And they would link it. That's so strange. And she did that and there was no hashtag ad. So what I'm gathering from this is that it was an undisclosed sponsorship, allegedly. And if you don't know about the new FTC laws regarding undisclosed sponsorships. And I remember my comments in one of my videos where I spoke about this, people were like, well, the laws in America are different. This is an American law. FTC is American. And the law says that this is a law regarding anyone advertising to an American audience, which I did say in the video. But, you know, why would you listen when you can just comment out of your fucking ass? I love when people just don't listen to what I say in my videos and then comment a direct opposite of what I said, even though I 
being said it, the FCC made laws about advertising to an American audience. So if you have at any point like a 1% American audience, then this is also about you. And Tana Mojo has a very huge American audience. If she does a sponsorship now, she has to clearly and obviously disclose that it is an ad, aka put hashtag ad or something along the lines of this is a sponsored post. You can't try to hide it. You can't try to make it sneaky and you know, all sorts, because that is not an obvious way to show your audience that you are doing a sponsored post. It has to be literally understandable by like a toddler. That's it. That's the law in simple terms. What is my hair doing? And yeah, she didn't do that. And I'm pretty sure that was an undisclosed ad. So if she wants to disagree with me and prove me wrong, then I would really appreciate that but until then that is an ad that she didn't disclose and that is against the law and you could get fined loads and loads for it. Tell your faves to, to disclose their sponsorships otherwise they'll be in trouble. Recently Tanamojo went to Jake Paul's boxing fight which I don't know who actually cared about that but she went and she was like the supportive ex-wife and then posted on her Instagram story saying, saying something along the lines of like should I take him back and he replied to that saying yes in like DMs and she posted that on her Instagram story and everyone's just like no he constantly talks about other girls now Tana Mojo looks very desperate in this situation and I don't mean that in like a necessary bad way towards her but she looks so desperate right now for attention from him and she could be getting actual real attention from someone that genuinely likes her because he clearly doesn't once he gets attention from her he's like oh, okay i'm bored of it now next girl but once she starts distancing herself away he'll try and reel her in again and it's an ongoing cycle where he'll talk about other girls publicly so that she will message him trying to get attention from him so then he knows that he's got her and then he pushes her away again it blows my mind that she's still in this cycle but i guess you know when you're in toxic relationships you don't really see it the way other people see it and i think she just needs a group of friends around her that will be like no and i don't know if they're just not doing it because of clout but her mental health should be a little bit more important than clout so how about we um save Tana Mojo 2020. Also Brexit, that was a thing. Uh on the 31st of January we officially left the EU, which means I um <clears throat> I am now getting deported. I don't know if that's how it works. I don't think that's how it works, but I don't have a British passport. So deportation vlog. It's just I don't know, it's such a situation i don't know who thought this was a good idea for people or the economy. Both are going to um also if you haven't seen it was mainly like Tories, so conservatives, voting for Brexit, and there was actually parties in pubs to celebrate Brexit Day. I don't know why you're celebrating the downfall of your economy, like you're all about to be broke, because factories are moving, the pound is dropping, all of you are about to be broke, so I don't know what you're celebrating. Like, so many people have already lost jobs, and yet they're going to the pub to celebrate. Blows my mind how stupid the UK is, and I'm still here for some odd reason does america want to take me in can i just have a visa please so i just thought i'd talk about brexit for a minute you know get a little political which is a great idea on the internet to get political because that doesn't get you attacked next i recently spoke about marlene estelle and how she copyright strikes another channel there are more updates about that now so i'll just bring you up to speed and then we get to the updates so there is a channel by a girl called Tina and she makes like makeup-y videos where she also does a little bit of commentary and stuff like that. She's on about 100k and Marlene Estelle is an old school YouTuber. She's had her channel for like 12 years now. She's one of the first like beauty gurus um, and then she started her brand Makeup Geek but her channel was the first thing called Makeup Geek. So her channel was Makeup Geek and then her brand was called Makeup Geek. I'm pretty sure that's how- I'm 99.9% sure that's it but I've never actually watched Marlene Estelle's videos and I never actually bought any of her products. So I'm very like neither here nor there for Marlene Estelle. She gives me very weird vibes though. I, I can't explain it because everyone's like, oh my god, we love Marlene Estelle. And she always gives me bad vibes. And I hate saying the word vibes, but that's all I can use to describe the situation because she just gives me bad vibes. So let me get into it. Tina has had some personal drama with Marlene Estelle, as you do on the internet. People have drama with each other. And she made a video uh, where in the title she uses the phrase Makeup Geek, which is one, Marlene's old channel name, and two, the brand. But you know, I use Jeffree Star Cosmetics in my title to chat well, I don't know, his mystery boxes or something. I'll use Morphe or, you know, whatever it is that you need to use to talk about a certain brand. There are so many videos on YouTube, like even educational videos about like the rise and fall of Blackberry or the rise and fall of like Juicy Couture and stuff like that. So, you know, people use brand names on the internet because how are you supposed to let the audience know what you're talking about without clearly stating it in the, in the title? So she had Makeup Geek in the title, which is all good and well. And then Marlene Estelle, copyright striked her channel, uh, which uh, there is a difference between a copyright claim 
claim and a copyright strike. A copyright claim is you just want the money from that video or you want to block it in certain countries. Um, a copyright strike is that video gets taken down immediately, straight away, as you file the strike, because that's a legal thing. At that point, YouTube makes you like sign. If you're filing a copyright strike, they make you like sign a thing to say that this is a legal document now. You're legally taking down someone's video because they have broken the law. But if you falsely copyright strike someone, then you are breaking the law. Let's make that very clear. And YouTube is very clear about what a copyright strike does while you're filing it. It will say, you know, the video will be taken down immediately and you have to sign off to like say that you like read all of that and you agree with it. So anyway, she, instead of copyright claiming the video, which also would be illegal, she copyright striked the video, which took down that video, gave Tina a strike, two more strikes within I think three months and her channel gets terminated. We've recently had the same situation with Trisha Paytas and Hot Tea where Trisha Paytas basically striked three videos within like two days and had her channel terminated and then there's nothing you can do about that. So Marlene Estelle being the oldest beauty guru there is or close to being the oldest beauty guru there is has had her channel for 12 years, has been involved with influencers but has also been an influencer and is telling me that she did not know what a copyright strike does but also just can't read. She, so she just didn't read what she she was doing she was just blindfolded clicking everything that she was supposed to click yeah i call bullshit you you don't just file a copyright strike and not know what you're doing and this all allegedly stems from marlena sell's video called date influencers where she talks about why her brand died and she blames it on influencers asking for too much money that she didn't have to pay them for sponsored posts now hear me out i know that you know 60k for a sponsored post might seem outrageous to the average sally but when you are let's say right James Charles, uh, and you have, I don't know, what is it, like 10 million subs, and you average five to 10 million views a video, and you sell out pallets, hundreds of thousands of pallets, like that, every, every, you know, restock, 10 minutes, and they're all gone. You're telling me that that kind of influence is not worth 60K, because, I'm pretty sure billboards cost a lot more than 60K, because you have to, first of all, get models, get makeup artists, get a studio, do a photo shoot, have someone to edit those pictures, have to rent out a billboard, have someone to put those pictures up on that billboard. And then realistically, how many people driving past the billboard are going to be makeup geek fans or makeup fans? So let's say 50% of people driving past that billboard are actually interested in makeup. Now, how many of them are actually gonna look up and be like, I want that, I'm gonna go home and look it up. The chances are slim. How about though, right? James Charles, a channel dedicated to makeup where the followers of that channel are interested in makeup, right? Because why would you subscribe to a channel that you're not interested in? So at least 95% of people watching his videos are interested in makeup and that is about like 9.5 million people so you're getting just a direct ad to the people that you're trying to target versus an ad that targets people that you know don't really care so i think you know those numbers might seem outrageous but they're actually a lot cheaper than other like old school forms of advertising but they're also worth it for the brand because you're getting direct contact with your customer so yeah might seem outrageous but it's just how things go i've heard to expect james charles to be like oh yeah just pay me 5k and i'll be okay with that when he can make more in adsense alone from one video it just doesn't make sense so i kind of got where she was coming from but maybe if your products were more like different she just kept on releasing the same things again and again and as we know with brands you have to differentiate a little bit make more different just products don't make the same single eyeshadows all the time and now with her rebrand it's the same single eyeshadows just in a different pan and how, how do you expect people to be excited about your brand when there is nothing new about it anyway before she copyright strikes me so yeah that's what she claimed happened and in that video she um publicly posted tina's private email with her like full name in it which is considered a form of doxing so tina tried to dm her with no replies and then nothing she got blocked after that so she couldn't reach out so she filed a privacy notice on youtube which gives the person 48 hours to change the thing that you're claiming is a privacy invasion and after 48 hours then their video will get taken down so for example it could be after you upload a video you can like blur things out or you can cut things out of your video um so she could have just you know blurred out the email in post edit and she had 48 hours to do that and she didn't so yeah and um, people are saying that it seems like the copyright strike from marlene estelle is a almost like rebuttal to her filing a privacy notice because there is absolutely no reason for the copyright strike and actually it's illegal you can't copyright strike someone for putting your company name in a title of a video also tina didn't use any clips of marlena Stoll's videos which even then it's fair use but it, it, most people will what was that noise but most people will file a copyright strike or copyright claim if you actually use clips of their videos there was no clips of videos so she had to look that video up and then manually claim it which you can see from um tina took a screenshot and it said manual claim like manually detected by marlena Stoll. 
Estelle. So it wasn't like uh, the system automatically grabbed it. it. Marlene Estelle went out of her way to find that. Tina then starts tweeting out, basically saying that she's now having lawyers after her because Marlene Estelle, you know, sent le did like what? Sent lawyers to Tina, and now they're emailing back and forth, and it's so that for expressing an opinion on the internet now some brands will send you a season assist or lawyers i've actually had that happen to me before <laughs> i'm not gonna say who it was or why but yeah i've had a season assist from a pretty big youtuber so that's cool we go through it um and it's so sad that people just don't let you express an opinion that they don't agree with and understand how you know it can look bad for them but like don't things then that's the tea and tina actually posted a thread where she said that she wants to make her response video but she doesn't know if she's allowed to because there are lawyers involved now and she will no longer be communicating without legal representation because anything she says now can just be used against her like you know how they say in the movies yeah she was asked for like copies of emails and stuff so now the lawyers are involved which is very scary for a smaller channel she's only on about 100k which is a lot but also that's a pretty small channel at the same time and it must be scary to have a brand come for you and the thing i don't understand is you know makeup geek is a brand but the brand's whole thing is that it's very personal like it's Marlene Estelle's face on that brand it's kind of like Kat Von D you can't buy Kat Von D without thinking of Kat Von D you know with other brands for example Hourglass I don't know who the owner of Hourglass is I've never seen them so when I buy Hourglass I'm thinking of a company I'm not thinking of a person but for example Kylie Cosmetics who wouldn't buy Kylie Cosmetics without liking Kylie because it's so directly correlated same with Jeffree Star Cosmetics you don't buy Jeffree Star Cosmetics if you don't like Jeffree Star because it's so direct Maybelline I don't know who the the owner of Maybelline is but with makeup geek that is it, as much as it's not Marlene Estelle cosmetics but it she's such a face of the brand that when you talk about Marlene Estelle you talk about makeup geek when you talk about makeup geek you talk about Marlene Estelle so the fact that she used makeup geek in the title makes sense even if it's a private matter because Marlene Estelle is so involved in being the face of the brand so if Marlene Estelle wrongs you it almost feels like makeup geek wrongs you and then Marlene Estelle posted an apology to the beauty community and to Tina but she has Tina blocked. How can you apologize to someone when you know they won't see it? So she tweeted out saying, I'm sorry Tina that I owe you this apology. On the evening of January 28th, I filed a complaint with YouTube regarding Tina's video. It's not a complaint. It's a copyright strike. I like how she's trying to downplay this as if it's not what it is. In hindsight, I realized I should not have filed this complaint. Copyright strike. I take full responsibility for my actions and I owe Tina a public apology. I am very sorry. I did not realize her video would be taken down immediately, but assume that YouTube would allow 40 hours for her to respond before taking action. My goal was to keep the issues between us as a personal matter without involving Makeup Geek, but you are Makeup Geek. On January 29th, after seeing that YouTube had taken the video down, I contacted YouTube with an email and followed their process of withdrawing my complaint. That same day, I emailed Tina directly to apologize for my actions and also let her know that I had withdrawn my complaint with YouTube and corrected one of my videos in response to her request regarding a privacy concern. I appreciate the opportunity to handle this matter privately with Tina from this point forward. Again, I would like to extend a sincere apology to Tina. Last time I checked, the video still wasn't back on Tina's channel. So I don't know how long it takes to withdraw a copyright strike, but maybe it's already up. I don't know. But as I'm filming this, it was still down. But also, <clears throat> I like how she's saying, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to handle this matter privately with Tina. Makes it sound so like, oh, we're just gonna, you know, have a chat about this. Just two gals DMing each other. She sent lawyers her way. This isn't a private matter. This is a legal matter. She's pursuing legal action against a small YouTuber for basically saying, hey, I think I'm allowed to talk about you without you taking down my video. So not only did Marlene Estelle break the law, she is now pursuing legal action against someone that did nothing wrong. Anyway, she then tweeted out saying, I also owe the beauty community an apology for causing tension in a place where we need love and acceptance. I'm sorry and hope you can forgive me and allow me to prove over time that I can do better. I like to see um, actions, not words. So I suggest you um, take back those lawyers, um, take the, back that legal action, just send back a nice email saying, hey, I'm sorry, uh, your video's back up. I made a mistake. Instead of pursuing legal action against someone that did absolutely nothing wrong. Blows my mind how that can happen. Yeah, anyway, uh, the last piece of tea is Gabby Hanna. I recently spoke about Gabby Hanna and how she basically put a a victim in one of her videos without addressing it in any way she performed she was doing an e-girl video where she tried to become an e-girl so she was looking for inspiration and she went on an article which spoke about an e-girl that actually was sadly by someone and it was saying it in bold next to the picture and she just said oh my god i love that t-shirt i used to have a t-shirt like that we should do it and she just did not address the fact that that's a victim that you're talking about and they didn't cut it out and people are saying oh you know she has the right to not notice things she has editors she has personal assistants she has a friend that was sitting right next to her and he said me no one at any point while putting that picture in realized that in bold next to it, it says that this girl right here has been murdered no one noticed it and no one thought they might just be a little bit insensitive to talk about a victim completely omit the fact that they are 
the victim and just talk about her t-shirt no one thought that that was a bad idea huh that's interesting but i already spoke about that and she actually has still not apologized for it or addressed it in any way shape or form but she did blur out the picture of the girl she like blurred out her face so she clearly knows that there is a problem because there were comments under her videos now there are loads about the timestamp and like saying gabby you need to fix this so she's reading her comments and we all know that she reads tweets because she loves to reply to them and she loves to indirectly reply to them but you're telling me so she did see this she saw that she did something wrong and you can tell she did something wrong because she fixed it you don't fix things if they're not wrong so she fixed it but just didn't address it no accountability here and i recently watched a ready to clear video on this and she made a very good point which i'm going to reiterate here it's that if she addresses this and holds herself accountable for this she's going to be forced to be held accountable for everything else including the jesse smiles thing including last year's thing and everything in between so i think in her mind it's better to not be held accountable for this because then she will have to hold herself accountable for everything else and explaining everything else is a little bit more difficult than explaining her just putting in the wrong picture or being insensitive you know this would be easier to explain like hey it was a misstep we didn't notice it very sorry and all respect to being paid to the victim possibly she could have donated the adsense to some kind of a charity but yeah that would be a lot easier to explain than the jesse smiles thing for example so i think you know her holding herself accountable for this would make it very difficult with other things so i think that's why she's not holding herself accountable because she's got a lot to hold herself accountable for and yeah i'm glad ready to glare brought that point up i think it was very smart so that'll be it for today's video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe so i post videos every other day or so usually it's about three videos a week so it's more or less every other day but if i don't post exactly every other day hit that bell and then you'll be notified when that is happening so you don't miss any uploads from me uh follow my socials down in the description down below and i'll see you in my next one bye guys